This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. So let's get started. Open After Effects and create a new composition. I am calling it an audio reactor. As always, I am using the 1920 by 1080 resolution, at 30 frames per second. And my duration is 30 seconds longer, you must choose the exact duration of your audio file. Now the first step is to import these files into your project. You can download them from the link in the description. Let's place this background image, as well as the audio file into your timeline. I have also imported the logo layer, but we will work on it later. Let's play it once. Sounds good. Now right click on your audio layer, and then choose pre-compose. I am calling it a music composition. Make sure to select move all attributes into the new composition, and then hit OK. You may be wondering, why in this pandemic world, I have pre-composed my audio file. The answer is very simple, if I have to change the audio later, simply open the music composition, and replace this audio with a new song. And everything works fine. Let's switch back to the main timeline, and then create a new solid layer. I am calling it reactor, and then hit OK. Now go to the effects and the presets, and search for the audio spectrum. Apply it onto the layer, and let's adjust a few settings. First, change the audio layer to the music composition, and it will start reacting with our audio file. Cool. Now I need to place this spectrum onto the left side of the frame. So let's do it. Change the first start point value to zero, and then the end point value will be half of our frame size. In this video, I am using 1920 by 1080 resolution, so if I divide the 1920 by 2, then I will get the center point of this frame. And now it is aligned perfectly to the left. This step was important, so make sure to follow the same. Let's change the other settings of the spectrum. I am changing the end frequency value to 300, to get more movement in our spectrum. Also, change the frequency band value to 500, as well as, change the maximum height value to 1000. Now change the softness value to 0%. And then I am going to change the display option to the analog lines. I am also changing the side option to side B, so that the spectrum will be visible on a single side. And this is how it should look now. Before moving to the next step, I am changing the color of this spectrum to the white, because we can change the color any time we need. Now again, go to the effects and the presets, and search for the polar coordinates. Place it right below the audio spectrum layer, and let's adjust a few settings. First, change the type of conversion to the reactor polar. And then change the interpolation value to 100%. It will become a half circle, let's make it a full circle. Again go to the effects and the presets, and search for the mirror. Apply it right below the polar coordinates. Change the reflection center value to 960, and it will become a complete circle. Cool. Let's open this audio spectrum effect, and change the thickness value to a higher number. I am using a value of 10. Now minimize all effects to get some room. And then again go to the effects and the presets, and this time search for the 4 color gradient. 
place it right below the mirror effect. If you select your gradient effect, you will see these four anchor points. Just bring them closer to the audio spectrum, and we will use them to change the color of the spectrum. I am keeping a green-blue color for the spectrum. But you can use any color you want. I am just showing you the way, destiny is yours. And this is how it looks now. Now it's time for creating more copies. Again go to the effects and the presets, and search for the echo. Apply it onto the layer, and here you can see it has created a similar spectrum. This effect will repeat the echoes, or the frame on different times, so instead of creating multiple spectrum, you can place the echo effect, and change the number of echoes here. But this effect is very heavy to process, so make sure your computer can handle it. I am using an echo value of 4, and it will create 5 new spectrum right here. If you can see, all the spectrum looks very hard. So let's make it a little smoother. Change the starting intensity value to 0 0.30. And now all the echoes will have different transparencies. If you think the spectrum looks too transparent, then simply change the decay value to a higher number. I am using a value of 2, and it is looking much better. You can also play with the echo time, to get a different look. Check the animation, and see if you like it. Cool. This looks good to me. You can always change the thickness of these lines into the audio spectrum effect. If you want a thin line look. I am keeping it 10 for this tutorial. Let's import our logo into the timeline. I am placing it on top of all layers. First of all, I want to change the color of it. So select the reactor layer, then go to the effect controls tab, and copy this four color gradient. Then select the logo layer, and paste the gradient on it. Cool. Now select the logo layer once again, and change its scale value to a lower number. I don't want my spectrum to look too big, so I am going to change the size of it as well. My logo should fit right inside the spectrum. Let's go to the first frame, where nothing is happening, and then change the reactor scale value, so that it will look like this. Cool. Now I want to add a rotation to the logo. So select the logo layer, and open its rotation property. Then press and hold the Alt, or Option key on your keyboard, and then click on this stopwatch icon to add an expression. In this expression box, simply type time, star, 60. It means the logo will rotate 60 times in a minute. If you want, you can change the value to make the rotation faster or slower. Let's move to the next step. Create a new adjustment layer, and place it on top of all layers. I am calling it light. I want the screen to flash on the heavy beats. So we need to use the expression for the same. We can do it very easily. All you need to do is convert the audio track into the keyframes. So select your music layer, then right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and select convert audio to keyframes. It will create a new layer, with all the keyframes on it. The new layer will be called as Audio Amplitude. Now select this layer, and press U to open keyframes. I don't need a left channel and right channel keyframes, so I am going to delete both of them. I will keep the both channel keyframes only. Now select the light layer, then go to the effects and the preset, and this time search for the exposure. Apply it onto the light layer, and then we will link the exposure value with the audio keyframes. So press and hold the Alt or Option key on your keyboard. Then click on this stopwatch icon, to add an expression. Now go to the timeline, and grab this pick whip. Now place it onto both channel slider. And it is now connected with the audio keyframes. But the problem is the screen is flashing too much. Sometimes it is becoming white, which we don't want. So let's fix it. We will add some more expression here, to make it work fine. First, 
Go to the beginning of this expression, and type V A R space 0 equal to space. And in the second line, type linear parentheses, 0, 30, 32, 0, 0 0.5. I will explain this script in the next step. The flash seems to work fine, if you want, you can increase the value of the exposure by changing the end value in the expression. Let's turn off the echo effect for now, so that the project will load faster. I will activate it later, after making all the changes. Let's see what these numbers are doing here. Select the keyframes of the audio amplitude layer, and then open graph editor. Here right click in this graph area, and choose edit value graph. If you can see, this is how my audio keyframe looks in the graph editor. You can zoom into your graph area if you need it. But we need to see all the keyframes, so I am zooming out a little. Right here, these top graphs lines are the drops, or you can say the beats of our audio. I want to flash the screen on these beats. We can tell the after effects to flash the screen above this value, and ignore the bottom value. So we will use this unit number in the expression, to mark the beats. Let's switch back to the main timeline, and now in the expression box, simply change the value 30 to 50, as well as, change the 32 to 52. It means we want to activate the exposure between these units. And if the unit is 50, then the exposure value will be 0. But if the unit value is 52 or above, the exposure value will be 0 0.5. You can always change the last expression value if you want a bright flashing. By the way, you will find this expression in the comment section below. But remember, you might have to change the values according to your audio file. Let's add the scale effect as well. Select the audio amplitude layer, and open its keyframes. Now select the background layer, and open the scale value of it. Again add an expression on it, then grab this pick whip, and place it onto the both channel slider. It will connect with the expression, but the problem is the scale is not looking better. We can fix it as well. All you need to do, simply click in this expression box, go to the end, and type plus square bracket, 100, 100. It means the scale value will remain 100%, and any scale will happen after the 100%. And I think the scale looks too much. So again click in this expression box, and type slash 10, before the semicolon. And now we are done. Thank you for watching this tutorial, I will see you in the next one. Till then, good luck, and peace. Design video products faster, with Envato Elements. Get unlimited download After Effects template, stock footage, fonts, music files, and web templates. Visit the Envato Elements. Check the first link in the description. <laughs>